Hi, I'm Erica Brown, and I've written Happier Endings, A Meditation on Life and Death. I wanted to share a few of the wonderful books that took me through the journey of researching death and how to die better. Um, so Henry Nguyen is one of my favorite writers, wrote Beloved, uh, favorite spiritual writers, and he writes there's so much loneliness and many are sitting there complaining they're forgotten by the world. They complain because interiorly they have no structures to turn to in their solitude, their loneliness, to turn into a gift for others in the world. They're not even aware that they're still alive, not simply here to finish up their life. And I think about that a lot in the process of writing a book about death and helping people live fully the entire time they're living as opposed to dying early. I think one of the books that helped me understand the grieving process of losing someone after death is C.S. Lewis' book, A Grief Observed. And uh, C.S. Lewis did not want to, although, although he's a well-known author at the time of his loss, the loss of his wife, Helen Davidman, he didn't actually want to spend too much time mourning her in writing, and he committed himself to only using all of the notebooks he had in his home, and then he'd be finished. But of course, the process of grieving is more complicated. Um, and uh, he, he found himself constantly meeting his departed wife. He says, why has no one told me these things? How easily I m might have misjudged another man in the same situation. I might have said he's gotten over it, he's forgotten his wife, when the truth was he remembers her better because he has partly gotten over it and he sees her in lots of different places. I picked up Half a Life in a secondhand bookstore by Darren Strauss and um, I was so deeply moved by it that I felt that I needed to speak to him for my book. I needed to understand the relationship between death and forgiveness, um, the suddenness of dealing with a tragedy that overlay his life in very profound ways and also made my children as teenage drivers read this book to think about the consequences of driving. I'm amazed by Darren Strauss's story. Uh, Darren Strauss was 18, he was about to graduate from high school. He was driving in a car and a classmate on a bike, a uh, schoolmate, not a classmate, but a, cl a schoolmate on, on a bike drove, swerved into his car and she died. And he had to live with the after effects of that death and what it meant, although he was exonerated by parents and police, he still had to live with the fact that he caused this tragedy. Probably On Grief and Grieving is the seminal book on uh, death next to uh, The Denial of Death of the Last Century by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. And no book on death can really begin without citing her and reacting to her. She took us through the stages, the five famous stages of grieving. And, um, and yet in interviewing people for my book, I discovered that she did not go far enough I postulated that she did not go far enough. She, uh, she lumps together the anger, the denial, the bargaining stages. Um, they don't work chronologically, but she goes through them and then talks about acceptance. Um, I don't believe anyone really accepts the fact that, uh, that they're gonna die. I think they resign themselves to death. But I think that there is a last stage which she didn't mention, which I dwell on in my book, and perhaps is the only really original thought in the book, and that is that people can get to a stage of inspiration at the end of their lives. It's not, acceptance just isn't enough, but you have to be intentional and you have to be conscious about that decision. I, I feel that I tell a lot of wonderful stories and have met a lot of wonderful people in the book, and you can share that. and without the pressure to be original. But in the sense that if you deny people the possibility of inspiration or you don't let them know that's a possibility, then they'll never get there. David Kessler, who wrote uh, the introduction to this book, also wrote a book called The Needs of the Dying, which I found a very helpful compendium on how to let people know what the dying may need, which may not be what you assume that it is. So I just read The Fault in Our Stars and in fact didn't do much else but read this last week. Uh, didn't take long, it's very accessible. It's an amazing story and deals with, with cancer and childhood cancer in a humorous, profound and thoughtful way. Gave it to my husband who finished it and said, 
he was shattered, gave it to my two children who all read it, um, both of them the same day, could not put it down. Uh, I think that there's a sensitivity in this book to death and to actually making life extraordinary. Uh, it's been great to tour politics and prose. It's one of my favorite spaces in the whole world, certainly in Washington, D.C., and it's every aisle is full with wisdom.